There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. Hi, everybody. My name's James. Welcome to California High Desert Preacher. Today's video is going to be discussing Welcome to California High Desert Preacher. I will be your host for the remainder of this video. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. That's like, share, and subscribe, and invite a family member or friend to the channel if you find this content valuable. Now, we're going to jump right into this article found on the Patriot Journal. During baby formula shortage, your president, Joe Biden, I uh, wish I had a child to sniff, shuts down largest U.S. plant, and they won't say when it's going to reopen. And so I will get to the point in the meeting of me reading this video because I usually don't go on pro-GOP sites and read anything about the Democrats because I am, don't have a dog in this fight. I don't belong to either side of the aisle. I am a libertarian and I don't buy the ideology that they are two separate entities. I believe GOP and the Democrats work together in conjunction, bring about the outcome that we see today and what's coming down the pike. Without further ado, let's jump right into the article, What's Happening? If you are around children at all, you know about the baby formula shortage. Yes, Biden failure. So bad that the country doesn't even have enough formula for its children. Not alone, but to say everything that's taking place that's happening under the Biden administration with fuel shortages and gas hike prices. They're raising food sky high prices. Pretty soon, I would surmise, because if I have studied my Bible, I want to emphasize that, and I study end-time biblical scripture talking about the 70th week of Daniel, okay, and end-time biblical eschatology, the day of Christ, the rapture, the judgment of Christ, the marriage of the supper, the lamb, and all these different things, I study these things. And I believe that we are already in the tribulation. A lot of Christians are very angry at me on Facebook, and they've called me all sorts of names. They've used all kinds of but ad hominem to attack my character and say all kinds of ungodly and unchristlike things about me. Joe Biden, I've said this before, will go down in the history of what's left of our country as the worst standing president. And Joe doesn't seem to have a problem with any of it. Now, other pieces of the puzzle have come to light. The FDA shuts down largest baby formula plant and refuses to reopen it. During the middle of what is already a very ugly situation for baby formula, the plant was shut down nearly three months ago after a bacterial infection caused the death and other serious illnesses. Um, all in the name of safety. Your government continues to march forward with the same principle, and we continue to keep swallowing it. Right? An Abbott spokesperson told DailyMail.com Tuesday that through the investigation by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, an Abbott revealed infant formula produced at our Sturgis facility is not the likely source of the infection in the report cases and that there was not an outbreak caused by the product. However, despite the findings of the investigation, the plant remains shuttered nearly three months later, fueling the nationwide baby formula shortage. Guys, here's the truth. The truth, the administration of Joe Biden and Joe Biden himself, right along with every other prior president, as far back as JFK, has not been the president. Since the assassination of JFK, there was a coup that took over the United States. That same coup has been running this country ever since. 
They're the ones that brought about the Fed Bank, the IRS, and they're the ones who have brought about the scandemic and Calvert 19. And they are destroying our way of life and our infrastructure right now. There are towns and cities in Arizona, U.S. of A, that have run out of water. But I bet you haven't heard about that. And people are packing up and moving out of Arizona by the groves. Unfortunately, they're coming back to California because they have no water, no potted water to drink, no water to water their plants, to use for cooking are used for cleaning or washing their clothes. There's water shortages in the United States. There are fuel shortages in the United States. Interest rates are skyrocketing in the United States. There's a baby formula shortage in the United States. And the United States government seems to appear not to care at all, almost as if they are main part and facilitating all these causes. Why would they do that? I'm going to share with you why right now. Here we are. We're going to be discussing the book of Genesis. All right. As we go, the book of Genesis tells us that God created man in his own image, forming man from the dust of the earth and breathing into his nostrils a breath of life. Genesis 1, 26, 1 and 27. The fact that God made man in his image and likeness is the most fundamental differences between humans and other creatures. All other distinguishing characteristics between man and animals' world fall within its broad spectrum. The image of God imparts special meaning, harmony, intelligence designed to human life. To be human is to be created in the image of God. This is a certain testimony of the Bible. Three scriptures in the book of Genesis refer to our being created in the image of God, Genesis 126, 127, 9, and 6 as well. We see they show that the image of God is of crucial importance to the grand purpose of humanity on planet Earth. They are not just statements of historical fact. They point directly to mankind's awesome destiny. I want to talk about predestination. There you go, baby. We begin our formula study with an overview of this intriguing subject. Why does the first chapter of Genesis teach us about the image of God? Then God said, let us make man in our image. Our, that's O-U-R. There are several things that are going on in what I've read to you so far. We describe and we understand that God created the whole human race. We describe that God created all men, black, white, brown, yellow, red, in his image, which means according to God in his word, we were all and we still are all equal in his sight. Number two, God created us, and it says right here, they made us in our image, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one theist God with three personalities. According to our likeness, uh, let me read it again. The God said, let us, meaning plural, make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the birds, over the air, and over the cattle and all things on the earth. Genesis 1.26, man stands apart from all other living creatures because of his relationship to God. The flora, the fauna, had already been created when God brought man into the scene. So, man was the crown of the physical creation and was designed to rule over all of the earth that God had created. Only man was made in God's image and likeness. What is my point? My other point would simply be this. We are not animals. We are not knuckle draggers. We were created in the image and likeness of the almighty God who has always been and always will be. He does not have a beginning and he will not have an end. He's not materialist like the materialistic evolutionists and atheists say that he is. When they ask the question, who created God? The answer is he was never created. He has always been. And because you're Tiny little pea brain cannot conceive that. 
does not make it true. Now, I've pointed out to you several reasons why I'm doing this, but here's the crescendo. Here's the cherry on top. Let's go back to the story of why the United States government seems to be destroying the American people, their American way of life, and every opportunity that comes for us to try to climb out of a depression, out of poverty, out of the possibility of turning into Venezuela. And what I see coming is because they work for the New World Order, one world government that is bringing about biblical end time prophecy in the book of Revelation, in the book of Daniel, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Matthew, John, in the book of Romans, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Luke. All these different parts of the Bible all connect like a puzzle. If you know how to study the Bible by using cross-references, what's taking place, they're doing the bidding of Satan. And Satan, so stupid and prideful, he doesn't realize that he's doing the bidding of God Almighty, the Creator. All this that is taking place because America and the world as a whole, the entire human race, has rejected God. They rejected His Son that came into this world to offer us salvation, not merited, not given through a birthright, but through grace brought on by faith. Without faith, you have no grace, you have no salvation. Period. When you reject Christ, you've already condemned yourself. God did not send His Son Jesus into this world to condemn it, but to offer you a way out through salvation. He was the second Adam. And America, I've warned you for years prior on YouTube and social media as American Man 1967, telling you all that was coming. Letting you know that this is what the Bible predicts, and you've scoffed and you laughed. Well, this is too late. We're finally here. The bomb has gone off. The clock has finally struck 12, and America is crashing. We have turned into Venezuela. We are a out of control train that's going to meet its end shortly, my friend. America will be ripping ourselves apart instead of going after those who need to be held accountable for what is taking place. We'll be destroying each other, trying to fight, scrap and scrape just for scraps to feed ourselves and our children. We'll be robbing each other, home invasions, we'll be killing each other. It'll be horrific and it's not that far off. And for you Christians that actually believe, that we're going to be raptured out of here before we go through the tribulation. I really have asked, especially on Facebook, where is the scripture to support your claim? And they cannot give me any. But I have given them plenty of scripture to support my view that we're going to go through the tribulation and not many of us are going to survive. How do I know this? Because I use the Word of God, okay, to translate and understand the Word of God. All I have to do is look at what happened to all the apostles, Paul included. Did any of them get the things that you believe God owes you because you are a Christian and a child of God? No, they all died a untimely horrific, merciless death. What makes you think that you're any better than they? All that being said, call on the name of Jesus Christ now, friend. John 3, 16 through 18, Romans 10, 8 through 10. My friends, now is the time to cry out to Jesus. Hit your knees, come to the end of yourself and say, Lord, I was wrong, I'm a sinner, and I need Jesus right now. And for you Christians who want to attack another brother for having a difference of opinion, where is the part of the Bible that you've studied that had to do with the characteristics of the God you claim you serve? For example, 1 Corinthians 
chapter 13. All the things that it puts inside of that chapter, all these gifts that you may have, if you lack love, you have nothing. You are so full of pride, so full of self and self-righteousness. Shame, shame, shame on you. Guys, if we do not start acting like our God and Messiah, if we do not start exuberating the characteristics of our God, but yet we expect people to follow after Christ, to accept Jesus, you are the light, Matthew chapter 5, the light and the salt of the earth. Without you, the earth has no flavor. You are the light that's inside of the tunnel. You're the representation of Jesus Christ. All that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. If you are born again, you better fall on your knees. You better start praying and begging God for favor and mercy and for forgiveness. And you better start treating your fellow neighbor the way God has called you to in love. I'm out of here. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. 316. You did not come.